So my proposal is to innovate in the battery chemistry. And what I've been working on is a combination of aluminum and sulfur. What if there was a battery that was six times charger than a lithium ion battery and can fully charge in less than a minute? This was an accidental yet major discovery by researchers at MIT that may have finally unlocked the full potential of aluminum sulfur batteries. Will aluminum sulfur batteries take over as the future of the battery industry? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel, friends. Before we begin, Again, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. A new battery is in town and it's blowing everything out of the water before it. In a leap toward low-cost batteries for large-scale grid storage, an international team of researchers led by MIT material chemist Donald Sadaway has invented a battery made of aluminum and sulfur. So how is this new battery structured. The researchers chose aluminum, the most abundant metal on Earth, as one electrode. As a bookend electrode, they picked sulfur, the cheapest non-metal. Then came the time to search for the right electrolyte. They avoided the flammable organic liquid electrolytes used in lithium-ion batteries and chose a chloroaluminate molten salt, which needs to be a liquid to be activated. This battery operates at the salt's melting point of 110 degrees. Celsius. But Sadaway says they have already brought that melting point down to 65 degrees and can see ways to get to room temperature operation. But how will this new battery be priced compared to lithium ion? The really exciting piece here is that the capital cost of these components is very low. The three ingredients are extremely cheap and earth abundant compared to lithium, nickel, cobalt, and graphite used in lithium ion batteries. Aluminum is no different from the foil at the supermarket. Sulfur is often a waste product from processes such as petroleum refining and widely available salts. Given the availability of all the components, the researchers estimate the cost of the aluminum sulfur battery to be as low as $8.99 per kilowatt hour. That's 12 12 to 16% of the cost of today's lithium ion batteries. Finally, the team notes that the simplicity of the chemistry should boost the recyclability of the batteries at end of life. In the midst of all this shocking innovation, will aluminum sulfur batteries perform well enough for us to turn away from lithium ion forever? The battery already shows an energy density of almost 530 watt hours per liter, on par with common lithium ion chemistry, and it's still in the early stages. Sadaway says, so improvements are very likely. I would remind you that when you compare aluminum sulfur today with lithium ion, a fair comparison would be to compare lithium ion in 1993, he says. So then how long does it take to actually charge the battery? It can't be less than a minute, can it? Uh, in which we talk about how fast we can charge this battery. In their experiments, the team showed that the battery cells could endure hundreds of cycles at exceptionally high charging rates. In some cases, the batteries charged to 100% power in less than a minute. They heated up in the process, but the engineers found they actually work better at higher temperatures. 110 degrees Celsius exhibits 25 times faster rates than 25 degrees Celsius, which is a big breakthrough. So then, what else makes aluminum sulfur batteries the holy grail of batteries? And is it actually safe? Surprisingly, the molten salt the team chose as an electrolyte simply because of its low melting point turned out to have a fortuitous advantage. One of the biggest problems in battery reliability is the formation of dendrites, which are narrow spikes of metal that build up on one electrode and eventually grow across to contact the other electrode, causing a short circuit and hampering efficiency, which is a polite way of saying a battery fire. But this particular salt, when it happens, is very good at preventing that malfunction. Chloro aluminate salt is crucial for the battery's success. What's more, the battery requires no external heat source to maintain its operating temperature. The heat is naturally produced ele electrochemically by the charging and discharging of the battery. In a typical installation used for load leveling at a solar generation facility, for example, you'd store electricity when the sun is shining and then you'd draw electricity after dark. And you do this every day. And that charge idle discharge idle is enough to 
to generate enough heat to keep the thing at temperature. So how can aluminum sulfur batteries be applied to everyday use? That means money to de-risk and bring this technology to market at scale. For the opening act, he says, small-scale storage systems with capacities of tens of kilowatt hours seem like a perfect fit for the aluminum sulfur battery. Today's lithium-ion batteries are still too expensive for such energy storage applications. This battery would be ideal for a single-family home. You'd be able to have a 50 to 100 kilowatt hour pack to get you through the night and a couple of days of cloudy skies. The smaller scale of the aluminum sulfur batteries would also make them practical for uses such as electric vehicle charging stations, Sadaway says. He points out that when electric vehicles become common enough on the roads, several cars want to charge up at once, as happens today with gasoline fuel pumps. So having a battery system such as this to store power and then release it quickly when needed could eliminate the need for installing expensive new power lines to serve these chargers. Moreover, because the molten salt electrolyte is thermally stable above 500 degrees Celsius and immune to thermal runaway and fire, the researchers argue that the battery chemistry is likely to be especially attractive for electric vehicles and electronic devices. And that means we're going to build something that is the size of, say, a part of power an iPhone, 4,000 milliamp hours. Sadaway has already made the research the basis for Avanti, the spin-off company he co-founded that has licensed the patents for the battery technology. So then, we're going to see real-world applications of aluminum sulfur batteries, right? It's looking more likely by the day. Aluminum sulfur is still in the lab but shows exciting possibilities. No matter what, it's not about one technology killing another, it's about finding the right tool for the right job. The mining industry has overhyped new strategies strategies and technologies before, including lithium-ion batteries when they first introduced them. However, aluminum sulfur batteries could be the start of something significant. These materials may take over the industry and become critical players in powering eco-friendly devices, helping to create a greener, better world. So what's the future of aluminum sulfur battery technology? We're just gonna have to wait and find out. Would you want this in your Tesla or mobile device? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave us a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs and green technology. Once again, thank you so much, and until the next time, take care and be safe.